we'll get right into first of all let's you know since slow pitch is such a such a great way to catch fish you can pretty much say that when when using a slow pitch jig uh, what we can say about slow pitch jigging is that slow pitch jigging works extremely well for inactive fish so you're activating the fish you're making him hungry whether he wants it or not and to me it's a little different than an instinct strike but the basic foundation of it is at its principal core is you're you're, you're making an inactive fish bite is, is what you're doing now with fast jigging or vertical jigging speed jigging etc you're ripping the jig you know you're dropping it down ripping it dropping it down ripping it you know toward the top is what i mean by ripping it reel and jerk reel and jerk reel and jerk you're fishing you're making fish feed that are already feeding for the most part and again with slow pitch jigging you're doing the opposite of that you want to you, you want you, the fish that are inactive you're going to make them bite by the way the slow pitch jig is presented so as most of you know with a slow pitch jig see how if we can get some you know a little bit of focus on this but you'll see you see the ridge down this jig it has a ridge on one side okay move this stuff out of the way so you see the ridge on this side when you turn it over this is flat and again on this side you get a big ridge along this which makes it do what makes it seesaw and flutter and makes it dive so this one being long and slender like it is this is for quick drops to the bottom and a little bit heavier current and you get over a knot and a half um, this little 60 gram will be great um, in say 80 foot of water and less um, actually we could get more precise and say 50 to 80 feet 50 to 90 feet you may be able to use this if the current is moving let's say two knots um, two and a half three knots you may have to bump it up to it to an 80 or maybe even 100 just depends on the current but this is a slender type jig again for heavier current in those depths so you want to go this is a 60 again so about a gram per foot a gram of jig weight per foot of water you're fishing in is kind of the norm some guys want to go a gram and a half and um and some of the guys that are real like benny ortiz um he's with shimano he often says a gram and a half per foot that puts you fishing a 100 gram jig in 60 foot approximately it's a 70 foot 80 foot you fish in 100 grams that'll be up to you to figure out okay you just have to play with it and see what you like all right so the difference is say for instance let's take okay that that was a slow pitch jig as mentioned okay let's get let's get the stuff out of the way again okay uh, the difference between that and just a vertical jig you know just for speed jigging steel with uh fishing steel just speed jigging vertical jigging up to the top the jig will be the same exact it'll have the same formations on both sides it'll like this one's got a little gill little and it's got a little got a little peck fin it's, it's exactly the same on both sides okay and the weight with these you can go a little less because you're not trying to create the action that a slow pitch creates and with these with these we call fast jigs you don't have to go a gram per foot. You can go about half that a lot of times, depending on the current, and get away with it. Or you can go heavier. It really doesn't matter. You're trying to match something maybe that's already down there, fish, you know, bait wise, and um, you're just ripping a jig to the top. But that's how you tell is they're symmetrical. The jig is exactly the same, no matter which way you look on both sides. Slow pitch is very different on one side to the other, and the, and the main difference is that. Okay, and again with this type of jig. You're, you're, you're probably going to catch fish that are already already active and feeding and you're just going to entice them to bite with the with the slow pitch jig again this ridge this usually will be facing up when it drops the smooth side usually facing up you know we've watched it on camera normally this this flat side will be facing up toward you know up toward the ocean surface 
this normally faces toward the ocean floor. And it does many different seesaw. Sometimes it'll dive for a minute and then seesaw, but it does a lot of different things depending on the way you pitch it and depending on the type of, you know, the, the weight of the rod you have and, and, and the power of the rod and whether it's a medium, medium light, medium heavy or heavy action. So that's how that works. Now, when we get into, like I said, I'm, I'm not big on colors, believing in colors. I'm more about the silhouette of the jig and how it catches fish. So again, the only reason we use this is the current was a little rough, you know, a little running a little bit, two knots or so. And we need to get to the bottom quicker and, and make a presentation before you're off vertical. Once you're off vertical, you know, once you're not straight up and down anymore and your line gets the angle, say the tides are going out and it's going this way, right? Well, once you've drifted and you're at about this angle, this jig is no longer being effective. Even though you think it is, when you drop, you're getting the slack in it. But here's what the jig's actually doing. It's just going up and falling straight back down. Going up, falling straight back down. The angle gets worse, it's, it's getting worse. All you're feeling is the bow and the line change. Okay, now when you're vertical and you're straight up and down, you're pitching this thing, it's doing its, it's, doing its thing. But as soon as it starts getting off to the side, 30 or 45 degrees, you, you, you know, you're, you're doing nothing. It's just going up and down like this. And it, it's ridiculous, stupid. And, and <laughs> the fish think it's ridiculous, stupid. And um, it feels like you're jigging, but you're not. Not anymore. Not like you're supposed to with a slow pitch. So you got to stay vertical. And you got to have enough weight to connect with bottom often. That's the big thing with slow pitch jigging. It was invented um, when Sensei Sato invented this in Japan. This these slow pitch jigs would be they they were meant for the bottom. He's got like a thirty percent rule basically that you don't you know you're fishing the bottom you're fishing for groupers basically, and um, of course everything else that's down there will bite it that's on the bottom. But this is they're more for bottom fishing than anything. Although you do catch pelagics with them you know on the way up. And some people do work them to the top and you can fast jig with it too. But if you want that bottom fish and fluttering action, you really got to have the right equipment. And we'll talk about that in another video. Right now we'll talk about jigs. Okay. Okay. This works great. Um, they like blue. This will be mainly for green water. Okay. This one's, this one's the same jig, but it's pink. And it's of course white on that side, the white belly of the bait. And again, these being white on the bottom, remember I told you that th this side's usually, you know, the flat side's usually facing up when you slow pitch, if you're doing it right. And everything's going good. This jig's naturally going to fall this side facing, you know, the ocean surface. This side facing the ocean, fl ocean floor, which is what you want because when the fish is looking up at it, he's seeing white, which would be the belly of the bait fish and the silhouette is of a bait fish obviously when this jig's falling he needs to see the white belly that's normal and uh some striping is normal in a bait as well the color pink um i like and this could all be coincidence because i catch fish uh especially sea bass and snappers of a variety of snap mangroves and, and and red snapper mostly but the pink works good and it works as good as the blue the green i mean if you just want to buy colors um, the green works good too, but I don't think it's got a lot to do with, with the colors. I just don't, I really think it's got to do with how you present this thing in the silhouette of the jig itself. And I think those things are key personally. Okay, so we've covered, you know, the slow pitch, the reason that it's different on both sides, you know, flat on this side, usually white, or you'll find foil stripes and glow on, on the belly side of the bait that should face down when it's fluttering at the bottom. Okay, this, here's a hundred gram, this is just a hundred gram um, vertical jig. Okay, this, if you'll notice, we know it's vertical. Why? What have we learned here? Because it's exactly the symmetrical same. It's, there's no difference in, in either side of it. So 
these are more likely to, the action is more likely a diving action off to the side. But they also, I mean, they do dive straight down. They, they do different things, but there's not an offset in weight on either side. So it's likely to perform less. That's why flip pitch jigs were invented is because they, they make the cavity different on one side and the other and the one side again, once again, stays flat. This is important, and I'm driving this into you guys so you, you can understand it, the guys who don't know. I know many of you know, and I'm definitely no know-it-all, but I have studied this, and I have used it for several years now. We started slow pitching in about 2013, 2014. So we've been doing it for a while, and we've always used steel, always. All right, so I'll talk a little bit about that. So you understand, you guys understand that this, this is a regular just – uh, vertical jig, just a speed jig. We call it a fast jig. In in, in the jigging world, it's a fast jig. This is a slow jig here as for slow pitching. So, all right, where to tie your line, okay? If you, if you tie to the split ring, that's not good. And a lot of people will tie to that and will disagree with me. But I don't want when I'm putting pressure on this fish from our jigging rod, I do not, even though it's parabolic, the rod bends over and it's really parabolic. I don't want the focus of the tension and the drag I'm pulling against that fish to pull on these hooks. We don't want that. So where would, where would we tie them? We tie here. We tie here. And another thing we do that I, I haven't done here, um, what 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 really should be done here is a is a ball bearing swivel, very small, um, a micro eighty something like that is what really should be on here. And that way, you you get more presentation out of the jig, whether it be slow pitch or a regular vertical jig like this. A ball bearing swivel on here onto the onto the jig hook itself. You see that onto the onto the jig loop. It's made into the jig right here. That part right there. That's where you'd want to put your your um, ball bearing swivel. Now, most people, what well, can I just snap ring one on? You can. They also make snap ball bearing swivels that'll snap on. I don't trust that. A lot of people use them, but I'd rather just put a small split ring, not this big, not like this one where the hooks are, but one about half that size that'll hold my micro swivel. It's a ball bearing swivel. Not only will it not spin up your line anymore, your braid, or your or not your braid, but more or less your leader, and it will spin to the braid because it's tied directly. Um, your leader's tied directly to your braid. I want to talk about that in a second. But get a ball bearing swivel on here. Just trust me on that. It'll everything will move better, it'll go better, whether it's a slow pitch jig or regular vertical jig. Okay. So ball bearing swivel is good. I'm sorry I don't have one on here just to show you. I just I don't have anything handy right here where I'm at, but really want that now whether you put a hook back here um that's up to you so that's going to depend on what what you're fishing on the bottom if it's hangy you probably don't want to do that and yeah you'll lose some fish because you don't have at minimum a treble back there or another set of assist hooks because in slow pitch jigging most of the time there's there's double hooks on both ends of this most of the time but again this is not a slow pitch jig. You're ripping this. So he's going to strike at this like crazily. You know what I mean? When he's, he's after this thing, you're ripping it up at 100 mile an hour to the top. He, he's, he, he's after it. So more than likely, you're going to hook him. And you still should take it easy on him because, you know, you want to use smaller hooks because the smaller hooks you use, the better the presentation of the jig. And this really matters with slow pitch jig. Now let me show you. You see the difference. This, look at the difference in the size of this stuff. So you see, you see this, this is basically a small rope on a vertical jig because it really don't matter. Um, the fish don't care about that. None, none of that matters. And you see the hooks are a little thicker. Now you compare that, let me, let's, let's put them right up next to each other. The slow pitch jig has a thinner hook for a better hook set. So it goes to the fish easier. Your assist string is very, very thin. That's two right there because that's a loop. 
Look how small it is compared to that on a regular vertical jig. The slow pitch jigging, you want an even better presentation because you're pitching this slow, and the smaller the hook and the terminal tackle on this, the better. And we want to use a ball bearing swivel on this as well. But the, 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 the lighter things are, the better, especially when you get into deeper water. So when I'm done with this one, I will have one hook here and one hook here. Even though a lot of them come with double assist on both ends, I'm just going to go with one on this little jig on each end. So I will attach one more just like this one onto the right-hand side of this jig. Um, but that's, that's the difference is the bigger your hook, and it's really hard to tell probably, but this is probably a 3X. Mm, yeah, probably a 3X. This one definitely is not, which is why when you slow pitch jig, you need special equipment. The rods need to be the right rods. The carbon, uh, um, the carbon fiber rods are great for this because they're very parabolic. They bend way over without pulling the hooks out of your fish. If everything's set right in the presentation, because the hooks are smaller, the jig's doing better work for you and less effort on your end to present this the right way. So you don't want heavy hooks on a slow pitch jig. So that's why you see these guys reeling in real slow. You keep your rod horizontal or lower. I point my, when I'm slow pitching, I point my rod at the water and I just reel. Very, I mean, I only pull up even, even the horizontal. I only pull up the horizontal when I'm setting the hook and I'm very careful with it. And I'll pop them two or three times carefully. And then I'll just let nature take its, you know, take its course. I'll drop the rod to say this angle. And I just kind of hold still there. You don't pump. You don't pump in reel when you're slow pitching. You just usually don't do that. The only time your rod should be lifting up and down is when you're pitching it. Once you're hooked up, point that rod more downward toward the ocean, you know, toward the water. And uh, the rod in slow pitching is just the tool that presents the jig, okay? Your reel is your winch. That's basically the best way to put it. So you're letting the reel do all the work. So you lift your rod, you think it's lifting the fish up a couple feet, and it is, okay? But that's not what we want to do. You turn a, a, a 7-1 or 7-3 ratio reel, one turn, you're getting just as much as lifting your rod. You see? Just as much line's coming in when you retrieve. So without the pumping action, once he's hooked up, that's why you fish with high-speed reels for, with slow pitch jigging. And, and, and this goes for vertical too, but this is really, really serious for this uh, slow pitch jigging because lifting the rod puts more tension on the fish than turning the reel. So we really don't want to fight against the fish with the rod. So again, the rod's the tool that gets this pitched correctly to entice your strike, get him the fish to bite it. From there on, the reel's the winch. The rod is just something that the line runs through, basically, and, and holds the fish. Your reel's doing all the work from there, and you slowly reel it. Why do you slow reel it? Because this hook is so small, whichever one you would get on, you know, if you have one on this end, which it will, you'll pull that out, and um, it comes out really easy. So if you hoss on that fish, um, it's, a highly like, it's a high likelihood because the size of these hooks are so small that you're going to pull the hooks out of them. And they're extremely sharp, too. So they just rip a hole right through the fish. That's why a lot of times you see the guys fishing doubles on each side because they're hoping to get more holding points, you know, along the fish someplace that won't come out because they are known for coming out. That's why it's so important to have the proper rods. So if you got a stiff rod, you'll never get a fish up with these little hooks. And if you do, it's just luck. You got the fish somewhere where, you know, it can't come out in the bone under the lip or something like that. Um, so anyways, that's very important. So I hope that makes a lot of sense. Your rod, your reel, everything matters. And, um, and, and, and with slow pitch jigging, your rod will be labeled. And just when you look it up, you want, you know, they'll have, it'll say, you know, 60 to 60 to 250 or 250 to 500 gram. You want to kind of match your rod to the, to the, to the depth of water you're fishing and to your jig. So all this is really a system slow pitch jigging is. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments, but I'm not done yet because, um, I want to talk about just for a second. Um, 
micro jigs. This is this is a 10 gram Japanese micro jig. And uh I, you won't and this is these are these are number twos, I believe, number two hooks. They might be fours, but they're not sixes. They're two or fours. I can't remember. They're extremely sharp. But I'm gonna tell you what we catch with this little guy. Uh, when you see school, small schools of Spanish and Bonita, Bullet Bonita, pop in the surface, and a lot of times they just won't bite anything. That's because you're throwing stuff usually that's too big. You throw that in a school of, of Bullet Bonita or feeding Spanish, you're not going to catch anything. That's basically scaring them. And you can get lucky and snag one, or you might get lucky and eat it, but I doubt it. So that's out. These micros, this is more of the soft stuff. When they're they're running along feeding, you can't see the bait that they're feeding on. You're like, why won't they hit anything? That's because you need something small like this. I mean, this thing's small. I mean, I got big fingers, but look at look at the size of this thing. I mean, it is very small. And you need you don't need an ultralight, but you need something that's, you know, a 2,500, 3,000 spinning reel maybe. If you like spinning reels, which is the way we throw these micros. And uh, you throw that in front of the school. And open your bell. You just let it let it flutter down for about three or four seconds, five seconds. If they don't, when you, when you flip the bell over, it comes tight. You want a controlled slack, and that is as it falls, of course. But if he's not hit it, you start pulling it back toward the top. You know, jigging it back up. And uh, you get this in front of them for enough amount of time, they're going to hit this. You would be surprised the amount of fish that will hit a ten gram jig. Some guys throw sevens. And another popular size is 20 gram. Now this, this is, um, I don't have a 20 gram in front of me. This is a 30. So imagine one between those two. So the, the 20 gram works good too, depending on what you're after. But micro jigging is, uh, is, is a really unique, cool little sport. You can fish this little guy on the bottom. You want to go probably to a uh, little bit bigger hooks, but you can't go too big or you lose the jig action and it just overtakes the whole thing. So you really got to have a parabolic rod to fish these if you're after bigger fish. But I'm going to tell you, they work. This is very specialized. Uh, it sounds simple, but it isn't because of the size of the hooks. But it really produces fish, okay? And uh, I can talk about micro a little later, um, but we'll go on into... My, one of my favorites is, uh, is bucktails and, um, the white bucktail, you can, you control this thing. You control it. This is a three ounce. If I troll, I'm going to use one and a half, probably maybe two ounce at the most. They troll really straight. They don't twist up, uh, especially like the, the Spro, uh, power jig or the power, the power bucktail, um, things like that. This is very effective for just about anything. Sea bass red snapper mangrove snapper muttons anything will hit this and um this is like i said this this one it, it, you won't there's no certain weight on a bucktail you need it to get to the bottom and it's nice to fish it up and down but if it gets off 30 degrees you're still fishing this thing you can still fish it's not like you're looking for this thing to perform a certain way the silhouette of this thing is what is what entices the bite because it looks like some sort of bait to them underwater and the color really doesn't matter much seems to me like we catch more on the white um it seems that way but that's mostly what we fish so that's what we're going to catch so there's lots of different colors so it, it, on the pink you say well let's use the pink today well why not because we've caught just as many on the white I mean, on the uh, in the pink is we have the um, the white. So the bucktail decision, as far as color goes, especially if you're, I mean, in more than ten or fifteen feet, the colors start to disappear. Uh, there was some 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 uh, REV sub work done underwater in in in, in some depths that show what colors disappear on a, on a chart, and I'll show you that. I'll try to include that here for you guys. And then um, the other the other way to go. Is uh, we do these too with um, I buy these heads, these colors, these green and white. I don't know how to blend those colors, so we buy these, and then you can just put, you know, a squid hoochie on there, in uh, in, in any color you want if you want to do that, or just go with a plain white head, put a black and blue, whatever. But these three colors, 
because I think, again, color doesn't matter too much. We just, it seems like we catch more on the white, but again, that's because we fish it the most. So, but we've caught fish just the same, really. It's ridiculous when I think about it because, yeah, I just don't think the color matters too much because you're fishing these things on the bottom. In the, any of you guys that have ever dove, um, if you do any diving or snorkeling or anything for lobster or anything, you get more than six or eight feet down, everything turns gray. It's pretty much what happens. Unless you shine, you know, uh, some kind of alt, um, alternate light source aside from what the sun's putting out, you know, you can't really see colors. And the fish, uh, you know, I think they use their auditory system more than they do their sight. So they feel the movement that entices them. And then once they see the silhouette, they strike. So they go toward what they feel, the uh, lateral line and the sensory nerves all over their bodies and in their heads. And when they get close to these things, they see the silhouette and they eat it. That's pretty much, I think, what, what goes on. And, and I think, you know, if you, if you start looking around, you'll find out that science proves that the color just really doesn't matter after a certain depth. It just really doesn't. So the weight needed, depending on where you're fishing, um, if you can get away with an ounce jig and it's 40, 50 feet, do it. It's just going to take a long time to get to the bottom if there's any current at all. If there's too much current, you won't hit the bottom ever. But you've got to make contact with the bottom with these to do it the right way. So you'll find yourself fishing ounce and a half twos and threes. If there's um, everything uh, where we fish on the Gulf and the East Coast, we're basing everything on a knot to a knot and a half. Um, so where you live, it may be three knots. It just depends. But on a knot, knot and a half current, twos are usually going to be fine. That's usually going to do it. If it's really running two knots or so, you might need a three, you know. But the important thing here isn't color. Again, it's going to be weight and the style of the, you know, the way that the way that, the way the butt tail looks. And that is a, that is fortunately something you don't have to worry about because you just buy the jig and it does what it does. Now, as it loses hair and it gets down and it gets down to where, say you've lost this much of the hair and you can see the hook and all the stuff, it becomes less effective because it doesn't look like a full size bait to them anymore. And something don't look right with it. So you want it. I like the longest ones I can get these pink ones. These, um, these, we, these, these were actually store purchased, but, um, the pink one, I mean, he's, he's pretty hot. The more hair, the better really, because they're going to rip it out anyways. If you, if you catch fish with it. And you will. And when it when the current's dead, nothing's biting, and you're bucktail fishing, you can always tip this a little bit um, with with ballyhoo. You can tip it with a piece of squid, whatever, um, and just kind of work it on the bottom. But that only happens. They're going to hit this bucktail no matter what, um, tipped or not. If you're if you're fishing, you know, in the right area, they're going to hit it unless the bite's just off. Because most of the time with bucktails you're not going to do, you're not, the fish need to be biting most of the time. It's not going to, it's not going to bring a bite like a, like a slow pitch jig wheel or a vertical jig may, especially nothing like a slow pitch, which is why slow pitch is so popular because they don't have to be active fish to eat it. With bucktails, you need an active fish unless you're trolling it. It may, it may, it may trigger a strike when you're trolling them. And uh, again, this, the ounce and a half, is, is a is a good size to troll ounce ounce and a half it's a good size to troll around troll troll it a couple like three miles an hour then try four and five and just pull two or three of them at different you know way behind the boat put one in the prop wash and um and just troll around for a while over your favorite reef or ledge or whatever you like and uh and, and, and work it i mean i've seen them working six eight hundred feet of water catching black fins skipjacks albies bonitas things like that all kinds of stuff span. Everything will hit them. Kingfish. Everything will hit these, and hardly anybody trolls them. So, anyways, um, that's it for bucktails. It's really simple, you know, really simple deal. And a lot of people will fish a live bait on the bucktail hook. A lot of people will fish a live if you have them menhaden, um, pilchards. They'll fish a live pilchard. They'll fish live elwise. Uh, some people will put a pinfish on them. Makes it excellent for grouper. Um, any, any live bait you want, you can add to it as well if the fish aren't really cooperating. And you can see, look at this, how cheap this jig is. Look at the hair coming off onto this rubber pin. Look at this. 
this is a cheap jig. You don't see any white hair on it because my jig, my jig's not doing that. It's mostly pink hairs. Anyways, just realize that that's not good. All right. So anyways, that's about it guys. Um, if you guys have any questions about slow pitching, um, because a lot of guys got slow pitch equipment and, and they're, and they're trying to use it. And it's, it's probably, it's probably not effective unless you've practiced it for a while. You know, this stuff takes a minute to learn. You're not going to get it in the first 20 trips or so. Probably you may catch something, but until you get this right, you can feel it when it's working right. You can feel it on your rod. You know, you fish in 16 to 20 pound line, mainly even in deep water. And you can just feel everything with the right rod. And as far as rods go, I, I hate to call out who that I would use. I, I hate to discriminate because everybody's got a good product. Jig Pro, um, George Polo owns Jig Pro, JYG. If you look up JYG Pro, Jig Pro, you can find jigs there for slow pitch. Um, you can find a lot of info there. It's got a lot of videos online. Um, very informative videos, too. And they, they got a ton of jigs. But also, I can't not mention Johnny Stedham. Um, that's Johnny Jigs. He's also done his homework. They have a ton of jigs in the shop and everything, just like the other guys do. Um, but those uh, Stet, uh, Johnny Stedham and George Polo, uh, they're, they, they, these guys know what they're doing. They build some really nice jigs for, um, for shallow and really deep, deep drop fishing. So... And they got the videos to prove that they work too. And that's one thing to go by. So anyways, that's it for today, guys. So just let me know if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I love to talk jigs and, and slow pitch fishing. And, and, um, really, um, for me, it all started with, with, with bucktails. That's, that's where, that's where my jig fishing started in the creeks, uh, with my father when I was six, eight years old. And he made his own bucktails too. He's passed away now, but um, I still have all his. I got his lead pot and all his all his wrapping equipment and everything. We still use it, but that's where it started for me. And then, you know, probably thirty five years ago, I went to using you know steel. And back then, I don't have one around here right this second, but it was just basically an aluminum colored jig, um, and it had two treble hooks on it most of the time one at the bottom and we just ripped them to the top and they were shaped like a, they were shaped like a pyramid. They were called diamond jigs and that's what we'd rip. You know, there was no colors to them. Silver works that those jigs still work and you'll find them in places too. It's just a silver jig. And it's symmetrical and uh, they work really well, but that's where it started. But anyways, now it's all evolved to this. And, uh, and by the way, slow pitch was invented in, in Japan. You probably guys know that, but, it's been over there for a good while. It's just starting to really catch on over here in the last couple of years, but that's good stuff. But anyways, you guys take care and, you know, I hope you, hope you learned something today. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments and I do check them and I will answer them. All right. You guys have a good day and be safe on the water. Fish on.